Hello and welcome to GD Life at Pals with teacher Alex to another GD Science screencast. Today's topic is chemical energetics. Let's have a quick overview of what we will discuss in this lesson. We will have a look at what exothermic and endothermic reactions are. We will have a look at energy level diagrams, a simple version of them. We will learn that uh, about the energy of breaking bonds and uh, forming bonds, chemical bonds. We will learn about activation energy and a little advanced energy level diagrams at the end. So first of all, some definitions. What is an exothermic reaction? It is a reaction that releases energy to the surrounding. The products that have uh, the products after the reaction will have less chemical energy than the reactants at the start and the temperature of the surrounding will increase. For example, combustion of fuels are exothermic reactions, cellular respiration is an exothermic reaction and neutralization reactions where acids react with alkalis or other bases. Endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs energy from the surrounding. The products will have more chemical energy compared to the reactants and the temperature of the surrounding will decrease. For example, the uh, thermal decompositions of metal carbonates or photosynthesis. Other endothermic processes include the melting of ice or the evaporation of water both have a cooling effect on you because you are the surrounding if you melt an ice cube in your hand for example the water gains energy your hand loses energy the energy given off to or being absorbed from the surrounding does not necessarily have to be in the form of heat it can also be in the form of light for example some clarifications of the vocabulary here, exo, the prefix exo means out or outside, endo, in or inside, and thermal is relating to heat. So let's have a look at a simple energy level diagram in an exo exothermic reaction. As we can see, the products have less energy than the reactants. On the y-axis we have the energy scale, and here we have the reaction progress. A plus B react to form C and D, and we will get some energy being released. The reactants have more energy than the products. After the reaction, the products have lower energy. What happens to the energy? It is released in the form of heat. So the steps, the products have less chemical energy than the reactants. The difference in energy is released in the form of heat to the surrounding, and the temperature of the surrounding will increase. The, the exact amount of energy in the reactants and products, as we can see, there's no scale on the energy um, axis, is not known. However, the amount of energy change can be calculated by measuring the difference in temperature before and after the reaction and knowing the amounts of reactants that have reacted to form the products. Here an energy level diagram for an endothermic reaction. The products have more chemical energy than the reactants. The difference in energy is absorbed uh, in the form of heat from the surrounding and the temperature of the surrounding decreases. Again, the amount of energy change can be calculated by measuring the change in temperature of the surrounding. We can see reactants have lower energy and we have a gain in energy products have more chemical energy and that amount of energy is absorbed from the surrounding. So how can we explain this? Why do some reactions release energy to the surrounding and other reactions absorb energy from the surrounding to happen? Where does the energy come from? Where does the energy go? So we already mentioned earlier chemical energy. So what is chemical energy? Chemical energy mainly relates to the energy that is stored in chemical bonds. And whenever bonds are broken, that is an endothermic process. So to break chemical bonds between atoms, energy is needed. Whenever bonds are formed, 
that is an exothermic process. So when chemical bonds are formed, energy is released to the surrounding. What we didn't see in the simple energy level, di energy level diagrams, we will see it later, is that in every chemical reaction, the bonds and the reactants, or some bonds and the reactants, first need to be broken before new bonds of the products can form. And we will have an overall endothermic reaction if the sum of all bonds being broken, the energy needed to break all the bonds, is greater than the sum of all bonds form. Then the overall reaction is endothermic. If the bond energy needed to break all the bonds, the start is lower than the energy released from the bond formation afterwards, the reaction is exothermic. So here is an example. When methane CH4 reacts with oxygen, first we need to break the bonds in the molecule so that we can rearrange the atoms and form the products which are carbon dioxide and water here on the right side. This is an overall exothermic reaction, but to start the reaction we first need to invest some energy because the bonds need to be broken in the first place. Once the bonds are broken, the atoms can rearrange into a more stable form, into a more stable arrangement, which means more energy is given out while the bonds are formed, and we have an overall exothermic reaction. So since every chemical reaction before it can happen we first need to break bonds that means every chemical reaction needs a certain amount of energy input before it starts and that energy input is called the activation energy it is the minimum amount of energy that must be provided to the reactants to start the chemical reaction in an exothermic reaction the activation energy is the energy needed to break bonds and in this case it's less than the energy released from bond formation. The energy from bond formation is large enough to keep the reaction going and a net amount of energy is released to the surrounding. The products have less chemical energy than the reactants. So we can see that here beautifully in this diagram. The activation energy is needed to get the reaction started, which means initially we need to break bonds the products form, which means a lot of energy is released. And some of this energy is then reinvested to break the bonds of more reactants. And the reaction is self-sustaining and keeps going until one of the reactants has completely reacted. The amount of energy released is the total amount of energy from the top to the bottom minus the activation energy that we need to invest. So the energy released is this difference. And we can see that is the same as before. It's the difference in energy from reactants to products. So it's not different compared to the first energy level diagram here. The difference between reactants and products. In an endothermic reaction, it looks like this. The activation energy, again, is the energy needed to break bonds and in this case it's greater than the energy least released from bond formation. The energy from bond formation in this case is not enough to keep the reaction going and a continuous input of energy, usually heat is needed for the reaction to progress. A net amount of energy is absorbed from the surrounding and the products have more chemical energy than the reactants. This is the amount of energy absorbed from the surrounding and we need to constantly put energy in. If we stop putting energy in, there will not be enough energy to keep the reaction going and overcome the activation energy of the remaining reactants that still need to react. In summary, in terms of energetics, chemical reactions can be exothermic releasing energy to the surrounding or endothermic, absorbing energy from the surrounding. 
To break chemical bonds, energy is needed. When chemical bonds are formed, energy is released. Every chemical reaction has an activation energy, the energy needed to start the chemical reaction. The explanation for the activation energy is that bonds always need to be broken first, which is an endothermic process, before new bonds can form, which is an exothermic process. I hope you have learned something new about chemistry and bond formation and bond energies today. This was Phuket Pals GD Life with teacher Alex. I hope to see you next time.